All right, today we are going to be starting our polynomial unit. Uh, so today, today is all about, uh, you know, classifying the different types of polynomials. Uh, so we got all those classifications. We'll talk about the degree, and uh, we'll talk about what happens to the ends of the graphs. So anyways, um, here are your different types of polynomials. In Algebra 1, we used a lot of linear polynomials right there, so like 5x minus 7 right there, that's kind of like a y equals mx plus b graph. We've also done a lot of quadratic graphs, you know, those are your u-shaped graphs right there. So the new ones that we're going to be looking at, we've started kind of looking at cubic graphs, something with an x cubed, but we haven't really looked at any uh, like this in our standard form. And then we'll also look at some quartic graphs right there. So the, they're all named based off of the highest power. So like, for example, the squared right here, that's a quadratic right there. The highest degree, we call it 2 right there. So it's usually the degree, I guess you could say, is the highest power of everything. So if you go and look at like your linear example, the implied power right there is going to be 1 right there. And that's why we say it's degree 1 and it's linear. All right, and then if it doesn't have an x, then we say the degree is going to be 0 right there. So those, oh, those are all of your, um, I guess, different classifications for that. So I guess on these here, we're going to determine whether the following is a polynomial function. If so, we're going to write it in standard form and then state its degree, type, the leading coefficient, the constant, and the number of terms right there. So first of all, uh, standard form, you just want to re rewrite these here in descending order. That's all that means right there. It's degree, we kind of just talked about that. The type is going to be right here, that middle column. Leading coefficient, this is the coefficient of, um, I guess let's say the highest degree term. Okay, and then the constant is the thing, uh, I guess, that doesn't have variable, that doesn't have a variable. So it's the thing with no variable. And the number of terms is just how many pieces there are. So looking here at this first one, um, first of all, write it in standard form. It's already in descending order. And for descending order, you're just looking at your powers. So you start with 4, you go down to 2, and then this one doesn't have a power here at the end. So it's in descending order, so that's good to go. State its degree. The degree is the highest power. So if you have an order, it should be the first thing. So the degree here is going to be 4. Okay. The leading coefficient, I'm just going to call that LC right there. The leading coefficient right there is the number out in front of the term right there. So that's 6. And then the constant, that's the piece with no variable. Sometimes you're going to have a constant, sometimes you're not. In this case, the constant or the thing without the variable is positive 3. And then what else? The number of terms. So these are just how many individual pieces you have. You have 1, 2, 3. Usually your terms are separated by uh, an addition sign or a subtraction sign. And that's all you got to do there. So you're just kind of recognizing the different thing. All right, so with this one here, um, we're going to look here at the variables that we have here. So notice we have x squared and x. So we need to go and reorder this to get it in standard form. So I guess this one has a pi out in front. So we'll go pi x squared out in front. Um, I guess the next thing here is a positive 7x. And then the last thing doesn't have an x, so we'll just put the minus square root of 3 at the end. Okay, now as far as uh, the degree here, I guess we can say the degree is going to be positive 2. So the degree, that's the highest power again. Okay, uh, the leading coefficient, or the thing in front of the highest, pow the highest power term, I guess, uh, that's actually pi in this case. Okay, um, what else do we need? Oh, the constant. So if this one right here, the constant, you have the square root of 3 here at the end, but it's a negative, so we'll just say the negative square root of 3. And then as far as the number of terms, 
This one has three pieces right here. And that is it. Okay. Uh, next one here. So one thing I kind of didn't emphasize here is we're, we're also determining if these are polynomials. Now, if you have something with a negative power, typically we don't consider that a uh, polynomial. So polynomials do not have negative powers. So we'll say polynomials have no negative powers. And also sometimes I'll see examples where they might have like a variable in the exponent, exponent. So we can also say they have no negative powers. I guess we'll say or variables as exponents. Okay, so just keep that in mind right there. So then we're not going to go and do all the, you know, the degree and all that because it's not even a polynomial. Okay, so actually, yeah, with this one right here, since you have that power of x right there, we're going to say that's not a polynomial as well. So keep that in mind right there. Okay. So n behavior. n behavior is what the ends of the graphs do. Typically, we put arrows at the ends of the graphs because they continue doing you know, whatever they're doing, I guess, afterwards. So like on A here, I guess this one's going to go down and to the left, and then it's going to go up and to the right here. Okay, so the n behavior of a function's uh, graph is... The behavior of the graph as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. So that's basically saying as the graph goes to the left and the right, is it going up or down essentially? Or sometimes it'll even level off, which I don't think we really get into in Algebra 2. Um, so anyways, for the graph of a polynomial function, the end behavior is determined by the function's degree and the sign of its leading coefficient. Those are two kind of big things there, especially if we don't have the graph in front of us. Now, just to practice some of the notations here, we're going to do the degree and then the uh, leading coefficient, and then we're going to write out the end behavior here on these here. So first of all, as far as the degree goes, if it's even or odd, it's going to be odd if the ends are in opposite directions. So we're going to say that this is odd and it goes in opposite directions. And I'm talking about the ends of the graph. The ends of the graphs here go in opposite directions. Kind of like if you think about like an x cubed graph, we graphed a bunch of those. Those kind of look like that right there. Those go in opposite directions right there. So anytime the graph goes in opposite directions, we'll call that an odd. Now, as far as what the leading coefficient is, is it positive or negative? Typically, you got to look at the right side of the graph. So as a graph goes to the right, the graph is also going up, right? And since that's the case there, we're going to say that this has a positive leading coefficient. I don't care what the coefficient is, it's going to be some type of positive number since it goes up and right. So let's go ahead and write that. That's up and right. Now, if it was going down in right, then we'd say it has a negative um, leading coefficient. You don't really have to worry about the left side as much. All right, and then here's how you write the end behavior. So this notation here says, as x approaches positive infinity. And, you know, basically that just means as x approaches towards the right side, then we're going to say, what does the y values do? So as x goes towards the right, the graph is going up. So we're going to say the y's or the fx, remember fx is kind of like the y's, the fx approaches positive infinity as well. And if you don't put the positive signs implied to be positive. Now as the graph goes towards negative infinity, this is actually moving to the left here. Negative infinity is this way. So as x goes towards the left, notice the graph is going down right there. So then we're going to say the y values approach negative infinity. Okay, or basically the, the graph goes down. And that's what you do there on end behavior. So the rest of these are just kind of repetitive type of questions. They're all slightly different here. 
So as far as this one here, B, is it even or odd? This one's going to be odd because opposite directions again. You don't even need to write that if you already kind of know that there. As far as is it a positive or negative leading coefficient, if the graph is going right and then down right there, we're going to say that's a negative. It's like, uh, you know, you got some type of negative A value that's flipping your graph completely upside down. So we say negative leading coefficient, and then let's get the end behavior. So we say as x approaches infinity, we're going to say the fx or the y values approach downward. So we say negative infinity. So as the graph goes to the right, it goes down. As the graph goes towards the left, as the x values approach negative infinity, we're going to say that graph actually goes left and up. So we're going to say the fx approaches positive infinity. And that's how you do those there. So these next two graphs here, notice that both ends are going in the same direction. When both ends are going in the same direction, we say that these both here are going to be even functions. It's kind of like if you think about an x squared graph. An x squared graph kind of looks like this. Oops. Something like that. So and that's kind of how I remember, you know, even and odd, I compare it to x squared or x cubed. I guess x cubed, different directions, x squared, the same directions. So we say even uh, power on these, or an even degree. Okay, now as far as whether they're positive or negative, if it goes right and then up, we say it's positive. If it goes right and then down, we say that it's negative. And then now we'll go and get our end behavior. Okay, as x approaches, they didn't write this part in for us, so we need to write it in. As x approaches infinity, so that remember that's going towards the right. As we go towards the right, the graph is going up. So we're going to say fx approaches infinity. Now the one that the reason this next thing here is different, as we go towards a negative infinity, the graph still goes up. So we're going to say as x approaches negative infinity, which is the left side, the fx or the y values still go up. So it still goes up to positive infinity. So then in that other graph here, both ends were going down. So we're going to say as x approaches infinity or towards the right, the graph was going down. So that's to negative infinity. And then as x approaches negative infinity, that's going towards the left, then the graph is approaching negative infinity as well. So as, as, as it goes, it goes to the left, then it goes down. And that's in behavior. Now sometimes, like on this next page here, they're actually going to give us a polynomial, and then without a graph, we're going to have to go and determine all this. So in a way, it's almost like thinking backwards, I guess. So a couple things we're going to look at. We're going to look at the degree, and then we're going to look at the leading coefficient, determine if that's positive or negative. All right, so the leading coefficient in this case here, first of all, look at the degree. The degree is the highest power. So we need to look here at this negative 2x cubed. Um, some people might rewrite this. If you want to rewrite this as negative 2x cubed in the correct order, and then negative 3x squared minus x and then plus 7, you can do that as well if that helps you. But anyways, highest power in this case here is going to be the 3 right there. So we say the degree is odd. Um, and therefore, the leading coefficient out in front, and that's negative. So sketch it out. So I need a graph. I don't care what it looks like, but I need the ends going in opposite directions since it's odd. So opposite directions. And then leading coefficient as it goes right, it needs to go down. So it goes right and down. So some type of graph, you know, that kind of goes like that. And then the other end is going to go up like that right there. And that's a sketch. You're not going to get it perfect. We're not looking for perfection. We're really looking at the ends here. All right. And then as far as how do you write your end behavior, you're going to say as x approaches infinity, which remember that's towards the right. We're going to say the graph goes down. So we're going to say the fx approaches negative infinity or downward. 
Okay, and then as x approaches negative infinity, then we're going to say the fx approaches positive infinity. It goes up as we're going towards the left. And that's all you got to do on those. So big thing that people are going to mess up here is not rewriting the equation in the correct order or just paying attention to what the highest power is. So just be kind of careful on that. So like looking at this one, the highest power thing, that's the 4x to the 4th. Notice you got a positive out in front. So we got an even power, and then we got a positive out in front. Okay. Now as far as what the sketch looks like, I just need both ends going up. I don't know exactly what it looks like, so I'm just going to draw something that kind of looks like that. You know, it might be something that's kind of squiggly like this. It could be. I'm not really sure. It could be neither of those there. But the end behavior is what's important here. We're going to say as x approaches infinity, or as x goes to the right, the fx, or the y values, go up as well. So we say that approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, or the left side, we're going to say the fx approaches positive infinity as well. So both ends go up. So there you go. All right, example four. I guess these are actual real graphs right here. So we're going to determine the sign of the leading coefficient and then the degree, even or odd. Now we're not going to be able to tell if it's like you know, a cubed or a raised to a fifth or a squared or anything like that, but we can tell if it's even or an odd based off of the powers, or based off the ends, I guess. So leading coefficient and the degree. Okay, so for this one here, the, the, the ends are going in the same direction. They're both going down, so I know my degree needs to be even. I guess I should have put that first. Usually I look at the degree first. And then since as it goes right, it's going down, that means it's going to be a negative leading coefficient. Don't worry about what's going on to the left unless they ask for in behavior, which they did not. Okay, look here at B. Notice your ends going in different directions. So now we know our degree needs to be some type of odd power degree. All right, and then as you go towards the right, the graph is going up. So that means the uh, leading coefficient is going to be positive. And there you go. This one here looks like a regular x squared graph right here, but we're not exactly for sure if it's x squared or maybe it's x to the 4. So we'll just say the degree. This will be an even degree. Remember, even because both ends are going in the same direction. Oops. All right, and then as far as a leading coefficient, as it goes right, it's going up, so that means you have a positive leading coefficient. And that is it there on those problems. Okay. Now the last thing, this one's kind of a weird thing here, but based off of the table, we can actually go and tell what the degree of a function might be. And this kind of taps into a little bit of calculus stuff here. Uh, we're going to be looking at differences of differences. And what do I mean by that? If I go and look here at this table, and I go figure out the difference between each of these, we're going to keep doing the differences of the differences until we find a constant theme going on between them. So here's what I mean. If you do 65 and you subtract 60, you get, okay, that's 60 right there. Or if you subtract, you know, 5, if you go 5 minus negative 5, you're going to get 10. Or if I go negative 5 minus negative 1, we're going to get negative 4. So really you're just doing the difference between all these numbers here. All right, and then uh, apparently if we do negative 1 uh, minus uh, 5, we're going to get negative 6. 5 minus 25, negative 20. And 25 minus 95, you'll get negative 70. Okay, and then from here we're going to do another set of differences. Like I said, differences of differences. And we're just going to keep going until we get a constant number between these leftover numbers here. So if I do this here, 60 and 10, that would be 50. If it'll let me write. There we go. Uh, the dis difference between 10 and 14. To remember, 10 minus negative 14. Be careful with the negatives there. That would be 14. Negative 4 minus negative 6, that would be 2. 
All right, negative 6 and the minus 20, that'd be 14. And then uh, negative 20 minus 70, that'd be 15. Notice there, that's kind of got a pattern going on, I guess, right there. That's kind of strange. I'm not sure if that's a coincidence or not, but we'll keep doing the uh, differences of differences here. So if we do that there, um, 50 minus 14, 36. 14 minus 2, 12. 2, uh, 2 minus 14, negative 12. And then negative 36. Okay, and then keep doing another level here. 36 minus 12, 24. Uh, 12 minus negative 12 right there, that will be 24. And then negative 12 minus negative 36 is going to be 24 as well. Okay. And then what you're going to go and do here is count how many levels you had. 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. So this is going to be a fourth degree polynomial. And that's what you are doing there on that. And this is really just kind of getting used to this idea here. This will set us up for calculus a lot eventually when you guys get there. Um, but yeah, really all we're doing today is just learning, you know, how to do uh, the different polynomials. And then I guess with this, you can kind of do a couple of things. I guess you could go and use regression, go use a fourth degree polynomial with regression or, you know, some type of quartic equation and, and stuff like that there. So, um, you know, that's where I guess it would be used right there to, you know, get a good regression graph here. So this one's kind of got some crazy numbers here. So I'm going to just go off of my notes. As far as these different differences, I guess, here. So you got the 999 or negative 999 and the minus 140. That's going to be negative 859. This next difference is going to be negative 133. You have negative 7, negative 1, and then negative 115, and then negative 829. Okay, then from there. Do these differences another level down? That would be negative 726. This would be negative 126. We'll get negative 6. We'll get positive 114. Oops. And then 714. Okay, from here, do another level. Keep going until they are all constant numbers. Negative 600. Negative 120. Uh, actually, negative 120 again, and then negative 600. Starting to see some consistency here, I guess. Uh, do these differences, negative 480, 0, and then 480. It's positive 480. And then this last set right here, negative 480, and then negative 480. So if you go and count here, you got one, two, three, four, five different levels here. So this will be a fifth degree polynomial. All right, last one here. Same idea. We'll do the uh, differences of the differences here. This one's a little bit more manageable here. So it's negative 16 minus 1, that'll be negative 17. 1 minus 4, negative 3. 1 minus 5, negative 1. 5 minus 16, negative 11. Okay, do another set of differences here. We'll go negative 14 here. Negative 2, positive 10. Okay, and then this last set right here, we'll go, we'll go negative 12, and actually negative 12 as well. So this one has 1, 2, 3 different levels right there. So this is a third degree polynomial. And I believe that is it here for the 8.1 lesson.